Okay, so at the very beginning of the series, I did this as a bottom lip because I was going to give him teeth. But as things progressed in the carving and I made his nose skinnier, it just... If I made his nose thick the way I first carved it, it everything would have been going on point for me because I'm used to that. But I tried switching it up to show you guys different techniques about the nose and stuff like that. So let's just get rid of this uh, bottom lip here. We'll take this bottom lip down a bit farther. That means push it back. Do some deep, deep cuts in the side here. Look at that. Problem fixed. Okay. So now let's get the, the aluminum cutting burr on. Where did I put it? Let's get this aluminum cutting burr on here and uh, give them some textures for the beard hairs. Clean up some, like here's an example of a stop and start, if you guys can see that. Let's clean up some stops and starts. Clean it up, give them some eyebrows with this. And um, some eyebrow hairs, sorry. And then we'll carry on. Okay, so this is the same burr that I used to give all these texture hairs and the, the beard hairs, mustache and the hair hairs. You want to get inside the mustache here too, right? Same with this side. Abracadabra. Okay, so I still got my fan going. I got it set up on the wall so you guys can see the shadows and stuff like that, how it all works. Now what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to go along all the outside of it and clean it up with this. Okay. I might touch the nose. You don't want to take away. You don't, we got some fine details here. This will take away your fine details. So you got to be very careful and don't and turn your Dremel on half speed because this is very hard on your Dremel, this um, sanding mount. Okay. So I'm going to clean up all the outsides of the carving itself with this, maybe touch the nose. Oh, I forgot to do the eyebrow hairs. I'll get that done after. And then I'm going to go along with this, uh, um, with my Fordham. This is a scotch Brite, and get the face. All right. I'll do a super time lapse of that because this creates so much dust. I have to wear my dust mask. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about some wood burning. With this wood burning cheap pen, it's like $65. I got it on my Amazon store. I've had it for a few months now. It's working really good for me. And a little bit of uh, propane burning. Yep, carry on. Okay, this is a little propane torch. I'm just going to burn really quick. Nothing crazy because this cottonwood bark, you can see bug holes there too, right? This cottonwood bark burns really easy and you burn the detail away really easy too. So I'm just giving it a quick hit. With this just to get some textures in there i'll have to go over it again with the emery cloth the deep spots down here where you cut deep mustache just give every, everything once a quick hit okay stop jordy stop oh no let's do down here a bit more Okay, stop. Uh, let's do here a little bit more. Okay, stop. That's it. That's enough. Okay, let's do over here more. Enough. Okay, that's done. So let's move on to the wood burning. The wood burner. Okay, wood burner ignited. Um, I suggest you guys do this in a very ventilated uh, room. And just because you don't want to be breathing in the smoke. So I'm just going to do around the eyeballs. This just gives it extra highlights. 
Um, sorry, I'm concentrating. This just gives it extra highlights when you put your finish on it. If you're going to put a finish on it. No one says you have to put a finish on it, okay? Do down deep in here. You can do those age lines up here too. Just, it just adds extra texture. Okay, now let's rotate this around. And the eyes is where you want to take your time. And you, you see that I don't take my time. So the next tutorial, well, I, I guess it will be a tutorial for the beginners. Not a tutorial, but how I do it. I'm going to do a green man in the, in the, I think I'm going to do it on a piece of birch. Because not everybody has access to this cottonwood burke. So I think it's fair for me to do a carving on wood so that lots of you have access to. I gotta I gotta do this eye a bit better. I gotta burn a bit deeper. This bark doesn't burn the best with these little burners. Because you gotta remember this bark <laughs> this bark's not wood. It's bark. It's like a jacket that protects the wood. Let's do it down here a bit better too. Oops. <laughs> Oopsies. Okay. And um, let's do under the hair too. Okay, so that's it for the wood burning. I've already um, signed it. I put a hole in the top. I aim the hole this way, so you put a nail on the wall, and it just sits on a wall. I'm basically more of a 2D carver than a 3D. I decided that last night. I might as well change my channel to a 2D carving. So let's get some uh, black paint, some black dollar store paint, doing the nostrils. You see where the wood burner didn't really take? because it was carved too deep there and it's a deeper channel so the, the, the torch can't get in there. I suggest that you don't try and burn in there because you're gonna burn away the details when you try and get in those low spots too, like right in here. I don't know if you can see on video, but there's no burn on this side in here. So I'm gonna get my uh, uh, black paint out. Okay, so we just got some dollar store paint here. Uh, carving fusion paint tray right here. I used to sell lots of these for like $5 billion each. Sometimes I included the paintbrush, but I haven't sold any yet. So, um, I mean, of, of lately. So, anybody wants to buy a paint tray, for, we'll sell this one for $2 billion. Just email me. So, what I do is I kind of, it's called dry brushing. So, you get you put the paint on the brush, then you wipe it off so there's not much paint on there. And in here, you just kind of, um, you fill in the white spots, basically. Okay, just kind of smudge the paint in there. That would be the easiest way to explain it. Okay, so I'm, I, I don't know if you're going to see on camera, but so like up in here, see where the burn didn't take? I'm going to go along in there and I'm going to dry brush it. Wipe the paint off. See how that's filling that in? It's a good way to ruin your brush. Like this, look at this. Oh, now I'm going to have to increase the price of this brush. It comes in two pieces so you can ship it. Yeah. So anyways, ah, boy. Ah, boy. Okay. Let's, let's, let's do midget fingers. Paint brushing. Not that there's any problem with midgets. Midgets are my friend. Are midgets your friend? Okay, so I think that's enough of that. So once again, this uh, midget um, portable paintbrush comes in two pieces. You can tape it, zap strap it together on the side like that. And uh, paint 
tray. I'll make sure this paint's dry and cracky and stuff before I send it. Just uh, send me an email and we'll carry on. I got to go over this again with the, oh, I got to do inside the nostrils with this midget painter. We'll just call this, not midget, that's, I'm not, I, I don't ins ever insult anybody. Let's call it tiny hand painter. We got to do in the nostrils. Now I do in the nostrils, just I put black in there and just get her done. Fill them up. Okay, I'll give this uh, paint a few minutes to dry and then I'll hit it with the uh, emery cloth again. And it'll bring the colors back in and for when you burn here, it will leave the dark deep spots in the deep spots, okay? Okay, so now that's all done. Now you got to think about a finish. What do you want to do? So you got the carving itself, you got the wood outside the carving, and then you got the gray or the outside of the bark. So I figured I want to offset this carving from the outside of the bark. You can see there where it's brighter here, right? So I figured I want to make the outside of the carving darker and then the carving brighter because then you'll see all the highlights, like the dark spots and the high spots. So what I'm going to do on the outside, I got this poly shade. What's this? this is uh, Mission Oak. I'm going to put this on the outside with this foam brush. That's all I got. I'm going to wipe it off. And then I'm going to, once that's dry a bit, I'm going to hit the carving itself with this uh, gloss clear. I don't know if I have enough or maybe I should Mod Podge it. No, I think I'm just going to use this here. And um, so I'll get that done now. Okay, so I got my paint mixer here. Um, I know my I know this station is dirty. Okay, this is a workstation. Maybe once a year I, I repaint it and do everything. But there's some channels there that were there. Um, I'm not insulting anybody by all means. I support all channels. I don't full subscribe to all channels. But there's some places where their stations completely clean and stuff. It's just like. I don't, I, hey, good for them for the keeping it clean. I actually tell you the truth, I wish I could keep mine clean, but um, I just don't have the patience. It's a work area. Okay, so let's get our gloves on before we start getting our hands, because this stuff stained your hands too. So it's good to um, mix this stuff because the color does go sit on the bottom. I got my... Uh, Liz surgical gloves on and we'll just kind of we'll try not to hit the carving too much and the outside gray part of the bark too much as well but we want to hit any spots where we did carve like here okay I know I gotta stop saying K so much on my videos, okay? So this is how we do it, okay? I love this poly shade stuff. Because it gives you a coat and it gives you a uh oh, I hit the carving. It gives you a coat and gives you a, a protective finish at the same time. Like uh sorry, it gives you a stain and protective finish at the same time. There's other brands out there. I haven't used them. I think, um, what's that brand? I don't know. Anyways, I'll get this done and then we'll spray it. Okay, so there you guys can see now how the colors offset the carving, right? This is darker, this is lighter. Makes it stand out. You can keep it like this and call it done. But I've changed my mind from just spraying it because I don't have enough. I need to do like three coats to kind of get a gloss with this. So this can's almost empty. What I'm going to do is my typical curving fusion style. I got this as a uh, poly shade too. It's the honey color. What's it called? Honey pine. I'm going to, this is lighter than this darker stuff here. I'm going to put this on the whole face. And then once it dries a bit, I'm going to hit it with my flap center and then we'll get some highlights out of it. We'll keep it curving fusion style throughout this whole series. So I'll just uh, paint this on now. Okay. You guys can see I got this painted on too. It, the colors don't differ too much, but they do. 
but they don't. But that's okay. So what we're going to do now is I've uh, gone along with a paper towel. You don't want to smudge it. I just dab it to get the real puddles off of it. Okay. So when this, oh, there you go again. Okay. This, when this is wet, now I got my uh, Fordham set up with the Peter Blair's flap sanding mandrel. I think this is like 240 grit on here. And I'm going to go along and I'm going to run this really slow and I'm going to sand the high points. I know you're degrading the stain to finish when you're doing this, but I don't care. You can spray it. You can spray it after when it's all done. This is how you can get high points and dark points. So I'm going to go along and sand the high points. And it's always good to keep your brush around that you've used that has extra stuff on it. Because if you've sanded too much, you can go back and hit it again with your brush and sand it again. I'll turn the fan on. Wear your dusk mask for this. Oh boy. Alright, so that's going to be a wrap on this one. So, lots of trials and errors, you know, like the nose broke off. Let's take, let's give Just Carve Rob a side view of this. There's your side. Look at that nose. Look how far that nose sticks off the piece. So, can you see where any of the glue is where I glued on the nose? Nope, don't think so. That's because I glued it on when the grains were exactly the same. Okay? So you can see high points and low points in this car. You see where it's brighter and darker. It's not my best one, but I like it. I'm happy with it. I think it, I explain lots of the things I do in these videos. And if it's able to help you guys, that's cool. Do you know what I mean? So anyways, um, the next carving, the next series I'm going to do is going to be a green man. It's on a piece of birch about uh, this big. Actually, hold on. Let me go get it. Okay, there it is. This is a piece of birch I cut down when I was on the trip with my buddy Stu. And we got this piece. Yeah. Uh, you got to make sure that there's no dust on the stuff when it's drying. Because it will dry with the dust on it. But anyways, so this is the birch. It's got some spalting in here. And you can see I had it down by the heater. So it started splitting along the grains. But so we're going to carve a wall hanger. What's a uh, green man out of this piece? Uh, so give me some time, but when I do these tutorials, things are show how I do it. I like to pump them out, just get them on so I can have more fun. Now, because I want to keep carving, I'm going to uh, carve this. This is the epoxy pour I did. This is the extra stuff I had from the big one. I'm going to see if I can uh, carve a decent looking wood spirit on this one because I got to prepare to do the big carve and I'll be filming when I do that. But I'll show this um, one when I do the big carving, put some lights in it. Thanks, everybody. Okay, I'll stop now. Bye. All right, so there's lots of dust on this, but I did that after, right after I finished that last um, eye video. So um, I'll be showing, I did F this up, and I did another one I F'd up, and I'll show you guys um, on the video when I do the bigger one what um, how I F this up, but um, there it is anyways. All right, we'll talk to you later.